It is a 6.29 and a half here on Sky 99.5 FM. We're heading into some news making in this, the first hour of the Breakfast Roundtable for today, Monday, the 23rd of November. And uh, we've got on the line with us uh, attorney at law and a member of the Police Service Commission, Martin George. Good morning to you, Martin George. Hi, good morning to you, Jessamy. Good morning, morning to you, Mr. George. Good morning, Dr. Wayne, and good morning to all your listeners throughout Trinidad and Tobago and the wider diaspora. Yes, um, Martin George is with us this morning because of a story um, that uh, developed uh, over the, over the weekend um, in the Trinidad and Tobago Guardian. We got a former National Security Minister and a former Chair of the Police Service Commission weighing in on the very nebulous circumstances surrounding the Commissioner of a Police, and they are arguing that this matter needs to be dealt with as expeditiously as possible and that it probably may not take very much in order to have a a permanent police commissioner or at least to make the person holding that post uh, put them in a permanent position. Uh, Martin George, as a member of the Police Service Commission, there have been ups and downs and, you know, back and forth with this issue of, of, of the police commissioner and someone confirmed in that position. We've had someone acting for almost a decade. Uh, well, the thing is, not not as long as a decade, uh, because the point is, uh, Mr. Gibbs, who was previously a host of the position, he was appointed um, permanently to the position. So um, it's not as long as a decade, but the point is, it's been a while that Mr. Williams has been in the position acting. Now, I just want to make the point the nation, Jesse May and um, Dr. Wayne and Edison, notwithstanding the fact that the current commissioner has not been appointed permanently, let's not lose sight of the fact that even in the acting position, he is still invested with the full authority, power, control, and financial autonomy of the sub office of commissioner of police. When you act in the position, you act with all the due authority of that position. So I just want us to de-escalate this situation in terms of the concern that has been exciting or agitation, agitating the nation as regards the lack of a permanent appointment. So those are issues that course, need to be dealt with. They need to be dealt with expeditiously. But let's not use it as a reason for saying that someone is unable to function or function effectively in the position. Now, Mr. George, psychologically speaking, though, do you think somebody who is acting again and again, you know, the, the appointment is, is rolled over, as the case might be, would be... Um, as confident to formulate different strategies and programs of policing and security and so on, if he is acting, psychologically speaking, I'm looking at now? Well, quite frankly, I don't see that it's a bar to your executing the best possible strategies in the position. And in fact, I think this commissioner is on record um, recently as indicating that at this point, it does not make that much of a difference to him whether, you know, the permanent appointment comes quickly or not, you know, because at the end of the day, he has been executing his plans and programs, and it, I guess, would depend on each individual. But from what we have seen and from what we have heard from him, it does not appear that he is using this at all as an excuse to say, well, look, I cannot perform at my best or give my optimum strategies and plans for the benefit of the public. And I think that is exactly the way it should be. Because, as I said, you do have all the powers and, you know, privileges and authority of the full office. That said, Martin George, you know, the fact that he has taken that position, that stands, why is it that he's not been confirmed in the position if he is showing that he is willing to take on all the power, uh, responsibility, authority, etc.? Well, that is a legislative issue because when one looks at the Constitution of Trinidad and Tobago and the provisions governing this section dealing with the Police Service Commission and the appointment of a commissioner, there are specific things which have been set out by the 
2006 and the 2007 amendments to the legislation, which require a process over which we at the Police Service Commission have absolutely no control in the early stages as it is now. It is now in the hands of NIPDEC as the authority, which has to select a firm which can then begin the process of selecting a short list of candidates to then go through the process for the selection of an eventual commissioner of police. So you, you understand what we're talking about. And it's been more than two years now that the process has been stuck at NEPDEC's front door. I, I, I see the phone lines lighting up, and I just want to ask our callers to give us a few minutes to share some information first before you start wanting to put any questions to Mr. George on this particular topic because he hasn't even begun to to elaborate or elucidate on the issue. So please hold your calls for the time being. Now, Martin George, you just described that it's a very lengthy um, uh, process before the Police Service Commission itself can begin to get involved in the choice of uh, or, or the appointment of a police um, commissioner, as it were. Um, in terms of NIPTEC being given responsibility, should that responsibility really reside there? Well, it's something that we have raised and we have questioned. In fact, um, you know, we have wondered ourselves at that. However, it does not appear at this point that we are able to change it. Because, as I said, what we really need is legislative change in the entire process. So I think that if the parliamentarians uh, decide that they wish to bring in the necessary legislation to parliament and vote on it and have the process changed, then I think they, it's entirely up to them. But they have always said that, whether they in, 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 in the opposition and then in government and so on, they all agree that this um, convoluted um, process has to be swept from the, from the board. What is the problem? Well, I, I, I don't know. Unfortunately, I'm not able to read the mind of politicians. <laughs> and, you know, um, they, they've said so. And I understand that um, the present government has indicated that this is going to be an area of high priority, so I guess we wait and see how that pans out. Does the government need a special majority for this sort of thing, um, as far as you know, Mr. George? Well, the thing is, once you're dealing with anything that impacts upon the fundamental rights and freedom of persons as set out in Section 4 of the Constitution, then there are certain requirements that would be um, set out there that would be special majority voting rights. This so, but this is something I think both sides have agreed in principle is needed. So I don't even think we're going to have an issue as to whether you're able to get any special majority or anything of the sort. Um, so I, I don't even think the issue arises, quite frankly. But, of course, um, we will have to wait and see how it's played out in the political arena. Because this is the reason I asked you um, what the problem is, seeing that both sides always agree that, you know, we need a simpler process and we don't necessarily well, well, have this to... this is the thing. But, you know, sometimes when parties are in government, they then take a different view when they become in opposition. So that's why I'm saying let's hope that, um, you know, the positions that were taken previously hold true and that um, we can get some cooperation and collaboration because... At the end of the day, this is too important an issue for the nation for one to seek to play political football with it. We're speaking with Martin George, attorney at law and a member of the Police Service Commission, looking at the issue of the appointment of a of, of a police commissioner. Uh, Martin George, um, so there must be some movement in terms of the uh, someone bringing amendments to the legislation or even brand new legislation to deal with this issue of, of uh, the appointment of a police commissioner. But even... Yes, well, I think the current attorney general indicated that this is an issue that he will be tackling shortly. So I would imagine that we will be hearing something more on it soon. Okay, and with regard to um, the the vetting process and the and the the interview process, that process is the police service commission involved in that at all? Um, well, in in, in that shortlisting uh, process? No, 
when the shortlist is created, then we do get involved. So that's why I tell you, it's still a long way off for any involvement directly by the PSC in the process. And you see, I think that's part of the whole difficulty because we really come in too late in the game in terms of the process. But unfortunately, we are all constrained by the four corners of the legislation as it stands now. So personally, Mr. George, what would you like to see if the, 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 the law is amended and solved? Would you like to see that the PSC is solely responsible for the appointment of a police commissioner? Well, the thing is, it's not just a question of us being solely responsible. The, the fact is, we can, of course, use the services of outside firms who are experienced in human resource recruiting and specialized um, expertise in that area. But the point is, if it is that it has taken over two years thus far, and we have not yet gotten a choice from NIPDEC, as to the firm for doing that recruiting, then certainly I would say it makes absolutely no sense leaving the process as it is um, for us to be waiting two years for that. We at the PSC could sit and decide we could send out our tenders and, you know, um, come back with the results and make a choice. Indeed. You In know, so, I mean, it, it's really ludicrous when one thinks of it that uh, all this time we've been waiting and we haven't even selected a firm which will then now begin the process of doing a short list of candidates from which to then do the selection of the substantive of the holder. That, uh, just to following up on, on, on that point then, is it that we don't have the local expertise to do these kinds of recruiting and assessment and screening of likely candidates? Must it be, must it be uh, a firm that's uh, outside of Trinidad and Tobago that well, does unfortunately, that? Unfortunately, I think this is one of the things in the legislation that we need to address because the legislation speaks of a firm experience in the assessment of senior police officers or senior police management. So the thing is, by that criteria, you therefore eliminate quite a few of our local human resource experts who may not necessarily have the experience experience in assessing or recruiting senior police officers or senior police management personnel. But the point is, we are of the view that it's not necessary to have specialized police recruiting expertise because at the end of the day, it's simply a human resource function. Uh, that, and that's what I'm thinking. I mean, we do have firms who are specialists at executive recruitment. And you're looking for, um, you're looking to recruit uh, a senior executive or the chief executive, the de facto chief executive for the police service. So surely right. a local firm who is used to recruiting chief executive officers or chief operations officers would That's be good point. enough to, to put in, in their bid. Words, it's almost as if you're saying that the firm must be, if you are looking for a CEO of a bank, you're saying that the firm must be specialized in recruiting CEOs for banks. It doesn't have to be. Once you are a specialist human resource management and recruitment firm, then you will know the criteria, you will know how to set the parameters, you will be able to look at the legislation, look at what the requirements of the job are, look at the job specs, look at the performance and appraisal criteria, and then you will be able to design your questionnaire, design your interview to ensure that, look, you meet these basic criteria and then now from your interview and, you know, second round interview process, you would then be able to select the best candidate. Mr. George, this is a small country. They're making this as if this is the USA or some huge state, as the case might be. Because um, senior superintendents, who appoints these people, ACPs and so on, is that done locally or is that done uh, from some foreign firm? Sorry, I didn't hear you. The, um, the, the, this is a small country. And I don't see the, the need to go through this, you know, these foreign firms and so on. Because um, senior superintendents and so on, ACPs, are they selected, aren't they selected locally? Yes, yes. Well, exactly. Yes. What's the problem with the commissioner? Yeah, well, I mean, the point is, as I say, it, it's legislative at this point that we need to have some serious legislative change and we need to do so urgently. But um, I... I want to reiterate, and I mean, of course, I'm just speaking in my personal capacity as an attorney, 
that I am of the view that notwithstanding the fact that you are not permanently appointed, I don't think it necessarily means that one cannot give of the best. And I certainly think that this commissioner has made his position clear that he is, you know, going to continue doing his job notwithstanding. This is Sky 99.5 FM and we're speaking with attorney at law and member of the Police Service Commission, Martin George. Uh, We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we continue the discussion and also take your calls. Stay with us here on Sky. Don't touch a button. We'll be right back with more on Sky 99.5 FM. 6.42 6.47 rather is our time here on Sky 99.5 FM. We have on the line with us in this news making segment, Martin George, attorney at law and member of the Police Service Commission. And we're looking at what it takes to appoint a police commissioner. Uh, we've got our callers on the line, Martin George, who want to join in the conversation. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. You're on the air. A very good morning to you, Jesse. Yes, good morning, Mr. Mr. Santa Cruz. Morning, sir. Mr. George. Hi, good morning. Uh, Mr. George, since it is that the acting commissioner of police has the authority, power, and privilege as that of a commissioner, does he receive the same salary as that of a commissioner of police? Thank you. Well, remember, when you're acting in a position, apart from getting your substantive salary, you would normally get an acting allowance. So um, you would have that added to what your substantive salary is. Okay, so um, I, I don't think it would be proper to go into any further details. Of course. The remuneration. Yes. Let's see who else is on the line quickly. Hello, good morning. Yes, hello, good morning. Yes, good morning. Um, yes, I'm waiting to get on. Yes, you're on the air. Go ahead, please. Okay. Mm-hmm. Good morning, Jesse. Um, Mr. George, good morning to you, sir. Uh, I, I, good I morning. Give me a call. Can comment speak rather than ask a I question. Am hardly here. Okay, caller, you need to speak louder because Mr. George can't hear you. Yes. I'm saying that I would like to make a comment. Yes, please go ahead. You're on the air. Okay. Um, Mr. George, I'm afraid the present com- commissioner of police, the acting commissioner, has fallen prey to the, um, the wiles of a former attorney general who thought it his, that his choice in life, he was chosen to bring a certain element of people to their knees. I refer to the case of the... Yes, uh, could the caller just speak a little louder, please? Mr. Yeah, no. Okay, um, a forest reserve, uh, um, forest... Yes, yes. It, he's not. Now? For some reason, he's not hearing you at I all. Don't know why I am hearing you? Are you hearing me, Jasmine? I am hearing you, but he's not hearing you. I don't know why that is. Anyway, I'm what is the you, question that you're asking? I don't have a question. It's no, a he comment. Said it's a comment. I am saying that this, um, um, the present commissioner has been made to pay the price of people like James Philbert. He was being brought to the knees by a former attorney general, and this obtained in the case of a number of people. I'm talking about. Malcolm Jones and Professor Ken Julian. I'm talking about Professor Copeland. I'm talking about Wendy Fitzwilliams. Everybody that seemed to pose to have any sort of um, standing in this community had to be brought to kill. The present acting commissioner was, was baited. He was supposed to have this thing dangling over his head just in case he didn't perform well. Okay, thanks very much, um, Forest Reserve. Um, okay, so d- did you get a gist of, of what he said, uh, Mr. Yes, Martin I, George? I, I, I heard what he said. Um, I'm not sure that it necessarily applies in relation to the appointment of the Commissioner of Police because, as I said, the feedback in this case has been based on the requirements of the legislation. Mm. So, you know, but I, I think I, he was hinting at um, a politicizing of the position well, and the process. Yes, and the thing is, as I said, I can only speak in terms of what we have before us, and it's a legislative issue at this point. There are requirements that the legislation has, which we have to follow. So I cannot at all venture into any question of whether it's politicized or not. Uh, in, in the article that came out yesterday, we had uh, Professor Diosaran talking about the fact that um, the oversight system 
for the police service and and i guess the police commissioner by default is very very tangled it it's caught between it's caught between legislative amendments uh and uh and civilian control and then police independence which which is a must um is 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 constrained by those various elements uh yes the thing is um in terms of the oversight and control the dichotomy really exists between the psc and the ministry of national security yes in that while we have the power to appoint unfortunately we are not the ones who set the terms and conditions of office we are not the ones who um negotiate the contract or deal with issues of the question of remuneration or anything of the sort so uh it is uh, a, a, a two-headed uh, system whereby, you know, in terms of control, because even for things such as overall national security policy, you know, um, one would imagine that in that regard, the commissioner must lay with and, um, you know, cooperate and, um, I guess, get direction from the Ministry of National Security. But then how does that gel with things which we as the PSC may, you know, wish for him to do or implement. And then at the end of the day, we are the ones who have to appraise his performance. But yet still, we don't have total control over setting the agenda or the parameters within which he is to function or operate. Mm, and then there is the added complication of the politicizing of, of the functions and operations of the police commissioner and the police service because you've got elected politicians who may be setting out a policy on, on national security matters that That's may be at correct. odds with what the police commissioner uh, and the police service should ideally be doing. That, that is indeed a fact. And in fact, that has created issues in the past whereby, you know, um, it, it appears that, you know, th th you had persons even not necessarily carrying the office of Minister of National Security who were speaking to matters of national security policy, which impacted upon the police service and the commissioner and you know it, it really creates a scenario where you are almost accounting to two or three different heads or different masters and i mean of course it could never be a comfortable situation for an office holder now, Mr. Georgia, in, in the newspapers over the weekend, you saw pictures of, of scores and scores of, of possible recruits to the police service. I remember when the, the Canadians were here, Joe uh, Iwatsky and uh, Gibbs, they're saying Trinidad and Tobago does not have a shortage of police officers. It is just how they, 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 they are deployed and this kind of thing, because we always hear from uh, the politicians and so on, oh, we need 200, we need 500, we need 1,000 more officers than the case might be. Um, uh, does the PSC get involved? in that sort of thing at all? Uh, in terms of the manpower and strength, we would make inquiries. We would deal with it from the perspective of assessing how the commissioner and the deputy commissioners of police, how they manage the service overall from a human resource perspective. But in terms of giving a directive, no, we wouldn't. We wouldn't get involved in terms of giving a directive. But the point is, if it is that, you know, you are showing that your strength is short and you are not taking appropriate steps to improve that then of course we can assess it from a question of how you are managing or not managing your resources and the service we're almost out of time but i just want to squeeze in one quick call before we go hello good morning hello yes the princess town go ahead please hi good morning um so mr george and prior to the change of the legislation um, the UNC had objected to the fact that the Prime Minister had a veto and therefore he had some political influence over this election. Could we go back to the same legislation and, and um, change the, the, um, the veto to a parliamentary approval rather than the Prime Minister having a veto you submit the selection of the Commission to the uh, Parliament for the approval? Your comments on that approach too. The legislation has been changed in that they, there is no longer that prime ministerial veto. There's no longer that. So it is actually the process of the parliamentary approval. Okay. Martin George, we're going to have to leave it there for now. But we want to thank you for giving us some of your time this morning. And we'll continue to track this story uh, as it develops.
Thank you, Mr. George. To me and look forward to um, being back on track with you guys on a regular basis. Mr. Okay. George. Okay. Mr. Yeah. George. Yes. Yeah. Is your Christmas tree up as yet? Uh, no, I haven't had He has no time to put up a Christmas tree. If he got three hours sleep last week, he got plenty. Not so, Martin? Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway. I plan to deal with it soon. I, you. I, I hope I you get some you. sleep, too. Yes. Yeah, All right. Okay, Martin George, uh, he is an attorney at law and also member of the Police Service Commission, uh, just giving us an idea as to how um, the police commissioner uh, is appointed. This is going appointed. on too long. They must be wringing mm -hmm. their hands at the commission. And we want to say thanks to Republic Bank Limited for making it possible to do this news update in this